What's good everyone, OJ here, welcome back to another video, and in this one, we are going to be going over my 2021 Game of the Year frontrunners. These are the games that left the biggest impression on me, but remember, I have not put together any type of actual winner yet. This is not in any type of order or anything like that. It's just the games that I'm considering in terms of contenders for my own personal game of the year not the keely awards not ign not anybody else's not your mom's it's just my own game of the year awards okay so of course if you guys have lists i love to hear your thoughts what you feel is game of the year feel free to drop that in the comment section below but remember guys once again this is just the front runners at this point i still have a few more games that i need to play in terms of i would say honorable mention so i need to get through some of those games and that is games like forza horizon 5 scarlet nexus and neo 20 need to play more of those those could make it into the final list here when i do have my big show at the end of the year here probably in december but with that out of the way let's go ahead and get right into it and we're starting off with bravely default 2 which is a game that came out earlier in the year and bravely default 2 to me was everything that i wanted to see in a true blue sequel to the original bravely default on the nintendo 3ds they definitely upped the graphics i like the graphic detail in there they made the story kind of reminiscent of what the original game story was and the flow of that they also made a lot of twists and turns in there. There were some things that I wasn't expecting at all in Bravely Default 2, and I had a blast going through this game. It was just as difficult and challenging as the original was to kind of get everything in there. They had a ton of content. I love the content in the game, and they had all the little bells and whistles that makes playing a turn-based RPG a lot more fun in today's day, where you can speed it up, you can slow it down, you can kind of just take certain things. The handheld mode was very fun to use, and it was good in that. The one-handed mode as well, so there was quite a number of things that I loved about Bravely Default. I think that it did a great job, and I love the different classes too i think that's what makes bravely default one of the best rpgs out there the classes really help kind of facilitate that gameplay and make a very cohesive experience that was a lot of fun and the new classes in the game were just a joy to get through and there's just some devastating combinations that you can do to take out the foes and the super bosses in the game all the organization so bravely default 2 definitely in the game of the year conversation for me but now we're going to go ahead and move on to the next game here and that is monster hunter rise so monster hunter rise is a very interesting game because i've never been a huge monster hunter guy this is the first time that i actually said okay i'm gonna spend some significant time in a monster hunter game and try it out and man i think i was wrong about the franchise because i could see the appeal the online multiplayer in monster hunter rise is fantastic the multiple different classes and weapons that you get in order to take down these monsters the graphics are some of the best that i've seen on the nintendo switch as well and everything just really melded in this game now it does take a little bit of time to get used to when it gets to the controls and when it gets to the item layout and kind of how you do things i can be a bit clumsy whenever i get back into the game but once you get things going it's a lot of fun and it just works and it literally gives you hundreds if not thousands of hours of gameplay with a variety of content in there so monster hunter rise especially with that online multiplayer is definitely in the mix here for game of the year 2021 now this one is definitely cheating when we're moving on to the next game here but i have to just mention it if anything just the honorable mention because this was my favorite game i think that i've played this year but unfortunately it is a remaster which it's not included but i'm going to talk about it anyway and that's mass effect legendary edition on the xbox series x i had so much fun playing through these three games and i think that mass effect legend edition it felt like a new game even though i've already played them the upgrades that they made to it with the frame rate with the resolution with the fixing of mass effect one it almost created a different experience because i haven't played through mass effect one since 2007 so it was almost a completely different experience and with all the dlc with all the upgrades with all the different things they did it just made it so much more fun to play this time now this is not going to win the game of the year but i have to just mention how much i 
enjoyed Mass Effect Legendary Edition on my Xbox Series X, and I think that it is a fantastic triple pack of games, great value as well. Now, moving on to the next game here, that actually has a shot to win it, since it's a new game in 2021, and that is Metroid Dread. This is definitely one of the games you gotta keep your eye out on when it comes to the game of the year, for me at least, just because Metroid Dread does everything that you would want in a new 2D Metroid experience. It nailed everything. It nailed the dread part of the title. It nailed the powers. It nailed the movement. It nailed the speed running. It nailed everything when it comes down to it. The graphics are beautiful. The gameplay is just, I would just say, symbiotic i don't know how to explain it but it's like you're in tune with the controls you don't ever fumble around for the most part whenever you start getting efficient with the jumping and the screw attack and the sliding and the shooting and the aiming everything just gels and you feel like you get into a zone whether you're trying to get away from an emmy or you're trying to blast down an enemy or a boss everything just feels right which is why you're seeing such a crazy speed running community that's what happens when everything just gels and everything just works correctly and you just can see how good you could potentially be and how awesome samus is in the game so metroid dread is a game that i still need to play more but everything that i've played so far in it my first playthrough playing it just portable mode which it runs beautiful on there now i need to go back and play it through dock mode and kind of get through all the way on hard mode this is just something that it's a fantastic experience the story and the ending i'm not going to spoil anything but the ending of the game oh my goodness one of the greatest endings of all time not in just a metroid game but also in a nintendo game that ending was phenomenal so metroid dread definitely on this list now next up is a game that's not officially out yet as of the time that i'm recording this video at least here in the u.s but it's out in japan and that is shin megami tensei 5 now i can't talk too much about this game at this point just because once again i do have some more stuff that's coming up on it but smt5 is one of those games that i've been playing for review on my own and it does a lot of amazing things now based off of what you've seen from the other reviews i'm just going off of that and shouldn't got my tensei 5 fantastic graphics we know that shouldn't got my tensei 5 fantastic gameplay tons of great demons Tons of great environments and areas and boss battles and difficulty. SMT5, one of the highest rated games of the year and definitely one of the best RPGs that is out there. One of the best RPGs that's out there so far. So yeah, SMT5 definitely on that list. But of course, I'll have more details and more information on what I think on that in just a bit. Now, next up is Returnal on the PlayStation 5. We got a PS5 exclusive on the list here and it definitely rightly deserves to be here now i was thinking which game should i put on or should i put both of them should i put ratchet and clank and should i put returnal and i'd say this ratchet and clank overall might be the better game in terms of how it launched and some of the other things and just what it does and maybe the content in the game but returnal to me had the gameplay that kept me hooked and addicted it was all the other little things about the game that i didn't necessarily like like the fact that there wasn't any type of save at the beginning and if you put your system in sleep mode and then if there was an update it would wipe your playthrough i mean there was like a number of issues but they fixed a lot of that and i recently went back into returnal and realized how great the gameplay is like how smart they do a fantastic job and i think they have some of the most solid shooting that i have ever played the most solid third person shooting with the ps5 dual sense controller it it just feels right it just clicks you just feel like you're in control and you can do what you need to do in the game so returnal is definitely up there as a contender for game of the year for me and last but definitely not least and a game that i need to play more but from what i've played it is phenomenal and that is tales of arise tales of arise is a game that has beautiful graphics too beautiful graphics the game looks fantastic but the controls the characters the gameplay everything just melds in that as well and it's a reboot to the franchise that it desperately needed tales bandai namco they have great developers there and for them to kind of say okay we're gonna go all in on this next tales game and kind of change the tone of the series but then make that gameplay a bit more fluid but also chunky full 3d in there when i mean chunky nice full solid hits and everything 
very good on their end. I love what they did with Tales of Arise. I do need to play it more. I definitely need to play it more, but I'll be playing more of it in December. So Tales of Arise, from what I've already played though, is definitely a front runner for game of the year, a strong contender for game of the year as well. So those are my picks when it comes down to it. Those are my picks. There's definitely some other games that could have made this list as well. There's lots of great games. There's stuff like Monster Stories 2. There's other games that came out this year. Persona 5 Strikers. There's so much good content that came out this year. I think that 2021 will go down as one of those underrated years because we didn't see multiple big 90s rated games, you know, when it comes to the big three releasing titles. So I think that it will be a underrated year. And I think that there was so much content and so many great games this year. It was hard to even put together this list right here. But those are my game of the year 2021 contenders so far. So what do you guys think about the list here? What are your games that you're looking forward to the most or you feel that are going to be in this list of contenders? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, click that notification bell, and we will see you for the next video. Peace.